He's down in Greeley, Colorado. I live up in Cheyenne. I've seen this Vibe machine several times. Um, people have been bringing them up there. There's a couple of people in Cheyenne that have bought them. It's an amazing implement. And of course, I'm always full of respect for anyone who's actually built something. And this does make people feel better. Gene ran an electronics business in Greeley for 30 years. Hands-on, TV repair, you know, just the daily grind. And he was researching water and how water works and its properties. And he stumbled on an idea of using frequencies to energize the body. Since then, the past few years, he's provided these vibe machines to people in 43 states and 13 countries. And that's just in the past 28 months. Uh, he's got 92 of these vibe machines out in Colorado alone. He's really hit on a great process for building them. And I think a great machine, having witnessed it and experienced it, uh, testify, he's good. Here's Gene Kuntz. Let me get warmed up, and I'll <laughs> usually a little nervous at the start. Uh, I'd like to give you a little background on myself. Uh, 31 years electronics TV shop in Greeley, Colorado. And uh, in my spare time, I would uh, do research. And uh, what brought me that direction that we're at, I was actually doing water research because the water wasn't right. Uh, we got bottled water, tap water, and I said, I can make water better than this. And uh, uh, so I started doing, uh, adding frequency, magnetics, high voltage, charcoal filters, uh, UV light, uh, polishing filters. And at one point, I spoke with Dave Farnsworth. His grandfather invented the television. And uh, through a process of using high voltage and uh, Mobius coil and uh, um, specific frequencies, I was able to get water to turn blue. And I go, wow, that's uh, kind of interesting. So I, like any inventor, I drank it. And uh, my energy just shot through the roof. And I thought, wow, I, I'm going to sell this. And uh, uh, so I found that it would only hold a charge for about uh, six and a half hours. And then it would lose it. So I knew this isn't going to work. We can't get it on the s grocery store shelves. And it just it wouldn't work. So I, I got the idea that the body is approximately 70% water. So if I could build a device that would charge the water in the body, it would give you more energy. And so I started doing research on uh, Nikola Tesla, George Lakovsky, Royal Reif, uh, Papimi, uh, uh, Pior, um, other devices that were on the market. And um, I found problems with what I thought were problems with all the devices uh, from my electronics background. And um, I incorporated some of the technology from these and came up with what I call the Vibe Machine. Um, I, uh, uh, that was in November of 2002. And uh, the first thing that I did when I used this device was I stood in front of it for two minutes and I noticed that my neck started popping. And uh, I called the chiropractor the next day and I said, what's going on? And he said, well, the calcium in your neck's dissolving. And I said, is that good? And he goes, well, yeah. He said, when you're a teenager, you don't have calcium buildup. And uh, so that was kind of curious. And, and uh, a friend of mine's wife had uh, terminal brain cancer with two months to live. And he said, I'm willing to do anything. And so we sat her in front of this machine for three and a half minutes a day for five days. And she went back to the doctor, uh, Dr. Kimmy in Greeley, and he said, the cancer has gone. And uh, I'm going, wow. And uh, so then another friend of mine from Carleton, Missouri's uh, girlfriend uh, was just diagnosed with breast cancer, and she was a nurse. And uh, they said she had nickel-sized tumors. She had dime-sized tumors, lesions. It was in the lymph node, and uh, she needed a mastectomy, reconstructive surgery. Don't wait. Um, get in. 105 grand. She didn't have the money. So he got a machine. Uh, took it back to Carleton, Missouri, and she, stood, she sat in front of it for three and a half minutes a day for 30 days. And she went to the doctor, and the doctor told her that the tumors were gone, except one was about the size of a pea, and she still had cancer. And she called me up, and she goes, what do I do? And I said, well, sit in front of it for another 30 days. And she did, and went back to the doctor, and the doctor said there was no cancer, and that was over two years ago, and she still doesn't have cancer. So in the meantime, I 
um, set the machine in the store and we started vibing people at the TV shop and, and the uh, line got a little bit long and so we clear, cleared out the shipping room and uh, uh, made it into a vibe room and we started vibing 150 people a day or so. And, and uh, we started selling machines and um, uh, we, um, like, you know, like you heard, we uh, just in uh, 20, what's well, 28 months now, we're in um, 43 states and um, 13 countries and we've got 92 machines in Colorado alone. Uh, the device it pretty well speaks for itself. It, um, we've had over 50,000 people in front of these machines with nothing bad happen. And uh, that's pretty tough for uh, um, a drug or a pharmacy to, pharmaceutical to make that remark. Uh, the device itself um, stands, I've got it out in the front and we're offering free vibe sessions today and tomorrow. Um, they only take about, I think we're going to do you guys about three to four minutes for the electromagnetic field in this area. Uh, uh, we have to run different amounts of times depending on the parts of the country. Phoenix uh, is a, a tough area. Um, actually, Wyoming is a tough area. Um, certain areas where there's a, lot, a high electromagnetic field, we get better results. Uh, um, there's um, electromagnetic maps you can pull up off the internet that show where these areas are, certain parts of the country. And I'm starting to see a correlation as far as the time we have versus the results we get. But uh, I haven't done anything to the effect of different types of cancers or different health issues in the area. But uh, the idea is to get results. But <clears throat> it, um, um, it's basically a set of uh, 12 gas tubes. Uh, they're all different gases. And they produce, uh, we're running noble gases, we're running other gases uh, that I've had mixed specifically for me. And uh, they create specific frequency uh, spectrum ranges. So we're transmitting in the infrared to ultraviolet frequency spectrum range. Uh, the periodic table falls in, the, in that category and so does the human body. Uh, I've taken special care to be careful as to not transmit any frequencies that would be detrimental to the human body. And we have done studies to verify that. Uh, above the infrared ultraviolet electromagnetic range comes the X-ray and gamma ray uh, categories. And uh, I did studies in order to create X-rays, you can use radioactive material. You can also crank up the high voltage over 12,600 volts and the harder material you use for, for instance, a spark gap, uh, the more likely it is that you can create X-rays which uh, can affect the body in my opinion. Um, so I've mounted these gas tubes in a specific geometry. Um, and this is set upon a Tesla coil, which I've set the resonant frequency on it for what I believe the correct frequency, carrier frequency of the human body. Uh, we transmit at a 0.65 Gauss electromagnetic field, which has a right-hand spiral vortex twist that twists the um, frequencies into the body. Uh, uh, the Earth's electromagnetic field would be a 0.5 Gauss. We're at 0.65. A, ref a refrigerator magnet would be 10 Gauss. An MRI would be uh, 10,000 Gauss, uh, 10 to 20,000. So we're, we're um, very low level field. And just like AM, FM cell phones have carrier frequencies to get from point A to point B. So we're, we're traveling these frequencies into the body. It also uh, has a slight negative charge. Uh, uh, this, this affects what they call the transmembrane potential of the cells. The uh, difference in voltage between the inner and outer cell walls uh, normally occurring by two parts sodium to create three parts potassium. And if we can take this transmembrane potential, the difference in the voltage of the walls, to a minus 70 to minus 90 millivolts, the cells will operate correctly. Um, if those voltages get to minus 50 millivolts DC, this is a DC voltage, toxins can build up around the cells. If they reach a minus 30 millivolts, it's possible for the cell to die or become cancerous. So we, um, we have all of these AC voltages put to a negative DC potential. And uh, uh, one thing that we do see, um, um, jet lag for instance, uh, um, 
aircraft in the air, uh, sky being positively charged, uh, earth negatively charged, the body over a period of time gets a slight positive charge. And by sitting in front of the vibe machine for three or four minutes, uh, airline pilots are telling me the jet lag's not there anymore. In fact, we've sold quite a few to United Airlines pilots just for that specific reason. And, and so, so we have this negative charge and we also produce what they call biophotonic light. And that's the energy around the cells. And we're doing a clinical study at the University of Arizona to prove that. Uh, preliminary studies have shown that it does do that. Um, if you change the environment around a bad cell, you can change a bad cell back to a normal cell. And that's been confirmed by uh, numerous MDs. Now, I personally am an electronics guy. I'm not a doctor and I don't pretend to. So I have to either hire everything done when it comes so I can get a third party opinion and uh, to get this in print. Um, we're trying to be very careful because whenever you come out with a new device to not make claims, but then you see so many things that are happening, uh, you're kind of in a catch-22. Um, you have to say something until you, uh, to get the machine sold so you can get the funding so you can <laughs> do the clinical studies. And, and so, uh, um, it's my, I can tell you my personal experiences or I can tell you about individuals that have used the machine in third party terms. But uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I have been contacted in the last 28 months, they, they have called me in Greeley, Stanford, Harvard, Penn State, University of Arizona, University of Michigan, Health Ministries in Ottawa, National Foundation of Alternative Medicine in Washington, um, just the US Army. Uh, has issued UL approval and a purchase order on a device. Um, we've got a pH study going on in uh, Tucson. I actually took the uh, donut antenna that's mounted on top that produces geometry to run these frequencies into the body because my, my idea here is if we can create this energy, we need to create some type of geometry or some kind of shape for the human body to accept it. And um, I worked with a guy that worked with a guy that invented GPS, uh, global positioning, and I learned how to transmit from a single antenna, three-dimensional holographic forms, which I've imprinted into the gold plating process. And I've uh, placed gold and quartz on top of the device and also inside of the box. And what that does, uh, well, NASA, NASA patented that uh, process in 2002. Um, so when we transmit this, it comes out holographically into the individual. Uh, healers, some of the good healers, not all healers, but some of the good healers, you know, have the abilities to correct things with individuals. And they're telling me that they're getting tired because there's so many ill people and they need some kind of a tool. And I believe that the Vibe Machine is that, a uh, tool to help the healers to balance the systems of the individuals to get in front of it. Um, it doesn't cure, treat, or heal anyone. It just balances the system of, of the body. And uh, everything on the device is set on specific geometry, uh, cubits, half cubits, quarter cubits, 50 times cubits. Uh, the base is made out of a material that's called phenolic, and uh, print, like printed circuit board material. It's uh, half inch thick. Uh, it's highly non-conductive. I'm the number two purchaser of phenolic uh, in the state of Colorado, right behind Peter Coors. And um, it allows electromagnetic fields to pass, but will block electrical fields, which uh, I think is very important in this process. We, we want to get frequencies in. We want to get the correct amplitudes in. We want to get this geometry set. It has to have the correct carrier frequencies. And it has to be done in some type of structure. Um, and I've turned the level down on the vibe machine three times and we're actually getting better results. It's to the point now the tubes don't even look like they're lighting. So we're not going for the effect of, wow, look at those tubes light. Uh, it's, it's more of a, uh, my pain is gone type device. <laughs> and, and so uh, um, uh, the clinical studies is where I'm at right now along with the sales. We have, um, uh, Stanford swim team used the device, uh, 22 girls three times, and uh, one girl broke the world record 200 meter breaststroke. Richard Quick, the coach at Stanford at that time, said in 16 years he's never seen anything like this. 
Um, he's willing to do clinical studies for us for free. Uh, since then, Richard has, uh, is about to leave Stanford. Um, we've had Harvard contact us. Uh, we've uh, wanting to do studies on lithium, uh, individuals on lithium. We had a lady in Fort Collins that was on Prozac two and a half years, used it once, and was able to get off Prozac. And so I need to get an MD up there so we can do those studies going. Um, Dr. Glenn Ryan is just finishing up a study in Huntington, New York on the electromagnetic energy around the DNA. And what he's done is he's taken uh, DNA in vitro in, and, placed in, and uh, vibed it for 30 seconds and has found that the electromagnetic energy goes up 39.5 times and then it will drop back down to about 7.6 times but it's been able to maintain that 7.6 time electromagnetic field for two months and running. Uh, we haven't had a drop yet. So we are seeing some changes there. He's also taken the same DNA and sent a sample to Peter Moscow in Louisville, Kentucky, who's president of Psychotronics. And he's been able to vibe the DNA in Huntington and see a direct change in the DNA in Louisville at the same time, um, which I believe relates to like the two sisters knowing the other one got hurt across the country. But we're showing that with the vibe machine actually getting the results on, on it. Um, so we also, I've, I've also had the device in front of, uh, um, in uh, Penn State University, uh, and uh, we held a glass of water in front of it for uh, the donut for four minutes, and the pH went from a 5.6 to a 6.3, which is seven tenths of a point more alkaline, and um, uh, which is huge. And you know, again, I've been told that cancer grows in acidic environments if you can balance the system then cancer doesn't like to live in those areas. <laughs> um, so we've had, that, we've had that study going also. Uh, we are setting up four IRBs for pain, lung cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer um, as we speak. Uh, we've got veterinarians that are using the devices in their practices, and uh, we've got pictures, I think, at the booth that we're welcome to show you of animals that have used the device, and within a couple of weeks, they the tumors don't seem to be there, but we want to get uh, studies going on uh, at the uh, CSU in Fort Collins, a huge vet hospital there, and, um, and get some proof there. The, uh, we, again, we've had over 50,000 people in front of the devices with nothing bad happening, so, uh, but this is all what they call anecdotal, so we've got to move to the next step and get these clinical studies done so we can get them published, and uh, that way uh, things will really go. Um, I, uh, I'd like to tell you a few of the um, things that have happened in front of the device. I know personally, um, at, uh, my, I, I had arthritis, and I would bend down to pick up a television, and it would hurt. And after using the machine for you know, a couple of weeks, at just a few minutes a day, I found that that was gone. And uh, what they call brain fog disappeared. Uh, I've had my cataract, my contacts changed three times. My eyesight keeps getting better. And uh, my ener energy level is just, uh, it maintains. It, I feel that uh, if people were to eat correctly every day, you know, the 70% raw and fresh and be properly hydrated, they would not need this device. But uh, that's just not the case for the masses. And so if a person eats incorrectly and wants to keep their vibrational level up, then the vibe is just a quick way to get to that point. And uh, we, we did a professional athlete, a triathlete, on a Saturday, and he was wired with what they call a runner's high till the following Thursday. But if we take somebody, say, with 17 meds a day, get it in front of the device, uh, their energy level might go up for two or three hours, and then it will go back down again. And then they'll come back and use it, and it might come up a little bit longer, and then go back down. Until all these toxins uh, leave the body, um, I believe that that uh, amplitude or vib what they call resonance, I call resonance, uh, will stay up. Um, we've had some really, really dramatic cases of people with serious health issues, uh, the stage four cancers. Um, that's, uh, I've, I've got uh, uh, Bill Brown over in Loveland, uh, Willie's, she, uh, Willie's uh, her uh, wife, or I'm sorry, <laughs> That Bill's the husband, and Willie's the, the, she's been a nurse for 50 years, 
And Bill had liver cancer and uh, it had moved into the lungs and into the lymph nodes and they gave him uh, three weeks to live and they brought Bill over February of last year and we started vibing Bill and by July of last year he went to the VA hospital in Cheyenne and they said it was the first stage four cancer they've ever seen come back with no cancer at all. And by September of last year, he was off of oxygen, which he had been on for four and a half years. And uh, Bill and Willie have been vibing people over in Loveland now since then. And uh, they have about 90 people through the door. And uh, I think she sold about 17 machines. But uh, we've seen, they'll come in there with lung cancer. I know Dan Nykamp uh, in Greeley uh, has a pool and spa store and uh, he had lung cancer, came in bald one day, and I said, what's going on? He says, I got five months to live. Uh, doctor said, I, you know, I've got cancer. I've done chemo radiation. And we put him in front of it, and it took about eight or nine months, but uh, he kept bringing in his reports, and, and uh, finally the one he brought in said that uh, there was no cancer there. And, you know, Dan, he, that's, uh, it's been about eight months now since he got that report, and he's still doing just great. And... Uh, uh, I think the, one of the, the more dramatic ones I had, um, Peggy Cockrell up north of Montana in Alberta contacted me and her son Devin, a uh, 23-year-old, had a tumor wrapped around the base of his brain and uh, he had done chemo, he did not want to do radiation and uh, we got a machine up there on a Thursday and we vibed him for, uh, he was so bad that they couldn't even get him in a chair, we usually just sit in a chair in front of the machine. They laid him on the floor and we vibed him for two minutes and uh, his headaches got worse. And uh, so Friday we went to three minutes and his headaches got worse. And so uh, the following Monday I said take him to four minutes and his headaches dropped in half. And by Tuesday we went to five minutes and his headaches were gone. And within three weeks he's riding a stationary bicycle three, uh, for five miles a day. Um, and his MRIs and all his blood tests are all, all coming back, the tumor is shrinking, and he's doing really well. And we've gotten a presence up there in that Alberta area, I think uh, um, that's been about four months ago. I think this, and, and we've got about five machines up there now. So uh, um, it's starting to work. We, we did have evidence on a nine-year-old that came in the store from Fort Collins, had a um, uh, blood sugar over 500, and we zapped her for like two minutes and she came back from Saturday to the following Thursday, she came back in, her mother brought her in and her blood sugar dropped from 90 to 220. But what was interesting on this little girl was she had a birthmark on the right side of her back of her hand and the doctor told her mother uh, when she was born, if that birthmark's not gone by the age of two, she would have it all her life. And that birthmark disappeared that week and uh, doctors are telling me that that's a restructuring of the DNA and that means you can change what you've inherited from your parents. So uh, there's another avenue that I uh, am pursuing uh, as uh, the device uh, gets out there. Um, and uh, also we've had, you know, it, it, it's like I have to direct this thing or it's going to get out of hand. Uh, MSNBC contacted me last year, wanted me on TV, and I turned down an interview. Showtime interviewed me last January, February, last February. I wouldn't sign her disclaimer form. Uh, John Ratz contacted me that uh, was involved with What the Bleep, wanted to do a movie on this device, and I said no, not till we get clinical studies done. And uh, we've had a rep in from Sloan Kettering, uh, wanted to do... Um, breast cancer research studies because we've had such good results there but they uh, actually wanted a pretty good percentage and I said no. Um, Warren Buffett representative was in last year wanting to invest and so we're, we're just I'm just running it as a small business and uh, I've got everything in-house and, and uh, I think that if, if as long as I don't make any claims and I sell these machines and this is what happens to the people and and uh, get the studies done, we're going to be just fine. But uh, to go up against the pharmaceuticals with something like this is going to be a tough, you know, it's something, it's a battle you can't win because they will outspend you. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I've, I've got to be very careful in that point. But uh, um, uh, what, we also have had results, I mean, as far as pretty much a lot of categories, um, uh, blood, uh, sugar, 
uh, we had a guy in from Longmont that was on insulin for 10 years, and he used it every day for three months at two minutes a day, was able to get off of insulin. And uh, uh, MS uh, and Parkinson's, uh, good results there. Parkinson's seems to be slow. Um, headaches, uh, we're, we're one to 11 times in front of the device and they tell me their headaches are gone and they don't come back. Uh, the kids seem to do really well. Uh, we're doing anything from three month olds to 95 year olds, we're doing cats and dogs. We can do pacemakers now, I've spoken with Medsonics and, and uh, some of the other pacemaker manufacturers. Um, the, uh, we had three kids so far in my store that stuttered since the age of 14 or uh, all their lives up to the age of 14. And uh, within about 10 days, uh, they've all completely quit stuttering and uh, just from using the machine. Um, and it doesn't seem to come back. I know we had a uh, nine-year-old in near Cincinnati, uh, autistic kid, and uh, after about four or five times in front of the device, the teacher just could not believe it was the same kid. And uh, we are seeing a balancing of left and right hemispheres through electromag elect EMI, electromagnetic imaging uh, testing. And uh, again, the more tests we get done, and uh, the better off we're gonna be so that we can get away from these testimonials. So, uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes? Uh, they're 17800 and we um, offer in-house financing at 0% interest, and uh, we have leasing programs. Um, the, the, the individuals that have the machines around the country, uh, they charge anywhere from $20 to $40, and uh, generally, if they cannot afford it, they'll discount the rate, or they'll do them for free, or they'll do them for a testimonial, or you know whatever. Uh, we find that when you do a stage four cancer, somebody with a serious health issue, um, that's our best advertising. So uh, um, they'll go out and tell the world for the rest of their lives. So, yes? Do you have any results with kidney problems? Uh, actually, I um, personally would get up two or three times a night, and I found that that doesn't occur anymore to go to the bathroom. But uh, unless you're talking about, if you're talking about cancers, uh, across the board stuff, we've seen results in those areas uh, on, on the... Uh, Areas. Yes. Um, before you go on the sales, before you reach the point of having the product, we make we make certain that's there. It's on. Somebody just came. All right. Before you reach the. Uh, the place of having a fine product for sale. How did you get funding for the R&D for the prototype? I, uh, instead of working 60 hours a week like I normally do, I worked 80 hours a week and, and, uh, uh, and then I would put something together and get it to work. Um, I, it's all self-funded. I never borrowed a dime. What kind of maintenance and longevity of the device do we look at? What kind of maintenance does it require? What's the longevity of function of the device? Uh, I'm, I'm offering a one-year parts and labor on it. Uh, we're we're 20, 28 months out. Nobody spent a dime, because uh, the way that I've the way that I've set it up is that uh, if an individual gets a machine, we offer a 20% commission on any future sales, and uh, so it behooves me to make sure their machine is working. <laughs> so we haven't charged them anything on uh, maintenance, and everything is. Uh, uh, the best quality uh, material I get my hands on. We, we have, again, received UL approval from the U.S. Army, but uh, to get, we, we need to get our CE mark and, and get some of this in, in place, but all that takes time. We have received notice of issuance of my patent, and uh, that, my patent attorney told me that uh, that's about a month, um, we're about a month out from actually getting a number, but then there, this patent process, uh, he said that uh, generally one out of 150 go through on the first, first try, and this one did actually go through. Um, and we, we put a lock on it for about three and a half years. You can, when you file your patents, you can actually put it under a uh, protective uh, category. So it gives me time to get, uh, get the devices on the market and, and that way. Yeah. Now, would this uh, be good for... Uh for raising IQ and also for mental health in general, like depression and uh, 
and uh, attention deficit disorder and things of that nature? Uh, yeah, one example, I had a lady from uh, Brighton come in and use the device for, uh, I think she was in there like six minutes. And she went, by the time she got back to Brighton, she remembered something she had forgot uh, like six years ago where she had put it. Um, it, it my, the way that I understand, when it fires up all this biophotonic light, which is all the way through your body, which is the gaps around all the cells, and if you, if you get the energy correct in there, the things start to balance, and then it'll allow the body to do what it needs to do. And, and so if you get the left and right hemispheres balancing, um, then things will work better. Yeah? How was the original design conceived? A guy named Paul told me that he had heard that the inventor got this information in a dream. Is that true? Well, if you want to go there, let's see. <laughs> Um, I've been a technical remote viewer for about seven and a half years. I actually was doing some work for uh, Ted Gunderson, who ran the FBI for about eight years, western half of the U.S. And he had a guest on one time, um, uh, David Morehouse, who uh, worked with uh, Major Ed Dames. And I, I asked Ted, I said, is this guy for real? And he said, yes, he is. And uh, can he really have an accuracy of 80% plus or minus um, 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 in future or um, past, and he said yes. And so I proceeded to investigate this technical remote viewing, and I took uh, Dames' course and uh, read all the books of the guys, the Brown, every, Courtney Brown, everybody in there. And um, I took a three-day one-on-one over in Boulder, and uh, uh, remote viewing has uh, uh, opened up my eyes as far as this data, and what I've found is there's a, there's a term called I know, and remote viewers can actually, because the government you know, funded this study and they used it to find terrorists around the United States, and, and uh, they can go into an individual's mind and read it, and they can get data from individuals. And in order for that to not occur, um, there's this thing called I know, and it seems like it's your idea, but it's really not. It's like, w see, when I started building this device, everything seemed to click. I, I, I put it together, and then it started working, and I go, well, I was reading some information after that, like three weeks later, and it said you need a 90 degree phase shift between electromagnetic and electrical fields, and I go, I already did that. And, or, you know, you need to do this, and I'm going, I already did that. And yet I had not read it. And, and it worked on the first try. Um, I've had some professionals, well, some very good psychics around the country. I said, why did they pick this guy in Greeley, Colorado that has a TV shop? <laughs> and they, what I got back was uh, they said that uh, he puts things into play so fast. Uh, he, people just, you know, if you're working for yourself, you either get out there, you get the job done, and you don't get paid. And so that's kind of the way that I, I work. You know, you, you've got to, we're going to try this. If that doesn't work, we're going to try that. Okay, let's, you know, we got to do something. And, and I, that's what I was told happened in this specific issue. And along with this, you know, I've been approached by um, uh, uh, people who have come to the store that uh, have been claimed to have been abducted and are told to... Um, uh, hand me drawings of things they want me to build and uh, uh, detailed drawings. Uh, the metal needs to be pulled from Minnesota. This iron needs to come from New Zealand, from this mine. It starts with whatever, and these are the minerals. And, and it's, a, it's, it's something that data is coming in, but it's, uh, it's, you have to be very careful. I, I listen to myself, and this will never lie to me, and that's if I get a bad feeling, then I, I, I don't do it. And uh, I built this for, uh, to help people and to balance the system. And um, other than that, it, it's a non-denominational type device. Uh, we've done Jewish rabbis. Uh, we've done, we sold to monastery 25 miles north of San Diego. We did 650 heterites up uh, in South Dakota. Uh, Shalandra Sai Ma is a kind of a, a she's a famous healer. And uh, she's endorsing this machine. She said, I've never seen anything like this. This thing works. Um, so so I, I want to, again, I want to keep this thing down to a low key. Yes? 
Have you had any experience with uh, addiction, say nicotine or sugar, anything like that? Uh, we've had some people that have told us they quit smoking, and uh, alcoholics don't like to use the machine because it makes the uh, alcohol taste funny. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I guess we won't go that way. Yes. Yes, uh, my name is Harvey Fiala. Uh, what is the source of the information on which frequencies are helpful to the body and which ones might be harmful to it? You know, certain ones can promote healing, and certain ones might, uh, they can destroy bad elements within your body, but maybe some can uh, hurt healthy elements within your body. And who, where do you get all these frequencies? Like, this frequency helps, and maybe this one's bad, and somehow you try to avoid the bad frequencies. You yeah. know, where does all it come from? Well, again, I want to, I'm transmitting in the infrared, infrared ultraviolet, which is above the microwave. Um, those two frequency ranges, but when you transmit spec noble gases like argon or krypton, they have uh, frequency bands. And um, I, I had to do a lot of searching to find results that had worked in the past and be very careful as to in um, what these overlays on these spectrums were, would fall. It, they're like fingers, and you're going to lay this on here, and you're going to lay another set on, and you're going to lay another set on, and you've got to make sure you cover the whole range. My pretense is like versus like. The example, the 440 cycle tuning fork, bang it, hold another one next to it, it will oscillate. 440, 442 will not. So if it will, the cells will only, the liver, kidney, lymph, whatever cells we're talking about, will only oscillate at the frequency that they're on. And the human body, um, you know, is alive, or, you know, and the rate at which it moves is the frequency. So we have to set those right on the money, and then it will increase the amplitude. But there is, uh, there is literature out there, and you've got to do a lot of digging to find it. Um, that do you have any question. website that lists these frequencies? Uh, there is, it's, a, it's multiples of a, a lot of old books um, back from the early 20s is actually where that came from. Question. Yes. Uh, as I understand it, it, it is a magnetic field, but I understand also there's a light field that you're, and that would be a skin type reception by the body. Am I correct in that? Uh, you talked about the Gauss field being a magnetic frequency passing through the body. Yeah, the, well, the electromagnetic field is my carrier frequency. Uh, is, there, the, is there light? Uh, light falls, the visible human eye light falls between infrared and ultraviolet ranges. So those are the frequencies you see with the human eye. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just clarifying how it worked a little bit. Okay. Did, did you have any, um, the, the blood cell turns out to be a, a cell, the white blood cell and the red blood cell, had any effect on that? We've had um, leukemia people come in and they are talking about blast counts and we're seeing results in that area. Um, I, uh, uh, Dr. Norm Sheely is going to start a study actually on Monday on DHEA, calcitonin, and free radicals. Uh, we're going to call it an anti-aging study. Um, and so we're going to get them, we're going to get it involved in, in that area. But uh, we, we have done um, heavy metal poisoning individuals. Uh, uh, we've, after a couple of months, uh, uh, I personally have seen a 75% reduction in heavy metals in uh, the blood, hair, and urine. Uh, but it does take a little bit of time, but it's better than chelation in my opinion. But, you know. Well, you just answered my question about what detoxification effects you were seeing. Oh, okay. Well, just very minor, uh, you know, everything leaves the body through the liver, kidney, and lymph system, and if you try to push too many out too fast, uh, you can get a fever, flu-like symptoms, tired, sluggish, and uh, so if you kind of ease into it, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, that's usually what most people do, and uh, then as the body starts to balance, then um, you're okay. In the work with your machine, have you observed 
Okay. In the work with your machine, have you observed cases where there has been regeneration of n damaged nerve tissue, which oftentimes is a, considered a permanent uh, loss of function? We, we've seen a 40% reduction in recovery time on broken bones and wound healing. Um, we, we also noticed that if someone has an incision or was in an accident, wherever there was damage, like a breast cancer, that area or a brain tumor will heat up. So they'll notice there's a sensation in the area that was incorrect. Generally, I think it just needs, it reheals the way it's supposed to, is how we explain it. Uh, but they do get uh, um, a sensation in an area if, it's, uh, if there's been a problem in the body. It kind of lets you know. Yeah, but it's just a slight tingling, and most people cannot even feel the device when it's running. It's uh, very subtle. Yeah. Have you, do you, have you had any experience with kidney stones? Um, no, I haven't. I had a quick question for stroke sufferers and stroke victims, uh, especially with a uh, blockage that occurred in the uh, cranial area in the cerebrum or medulla oblongata. It, it helps on the recovery time. Um, we've seen that, people coming in with strokes. And it, but depending on how hard the stroke's been hit as to how long it takes, um, uh, everything's on a, you know, we'll, we'll, they'll come in, I had one guy come in, pain it works really well. We had good results on pain. A guy came in with uh, screws, pins, cages uh, in his back and uh, he was on three Vicodin and, what was it, three Vicodin and one Oxycontin every four hours around the clock since 92. And uh, he came in and it took us uh, 10 days. He was down to two Vicodin every four hours and um, uh, within about two and a half weeks, we had the guy down to one Vicodin every eight hours. But that was a long, the guy was a drug addict at that point. <laughs> but uh, it does work on pain. Yes? Is there any interaction with uh, the device with uh, pacemakers? No, no. Uh, pacemaker will handle one gauss on the chest, like uh, for a defibrilla defibrillator and we're only producing 0.65. So if you put your chest right up next to the neck, that's the highest field at that point. But if you sit back three feet, you're even less than that. Yeah. Could you put the machine right down there and irradiate everybody in this auditorium, or do you have to be in certain proximity to it? Uh, the field travels if, about seven feet out. Uh, generally, if you sit three foot center of the machine, center of your head, um, that seems to be ideal, and you're right in the middle of the field. Um, but it's not, it's not made to travel this far. And again, I cranked the level down three times because if I, I decided if I'm going to put a device onto the market, uh, you have to be very careful because uh, some of these people will come in and, you know, they're one foot on a banana peel and the other one on a grave, and <laughs> your machine did it, you know, and I'm going. <laughs> so we have to take everything kind of easy if you're expecting to put the masses in front of it. Yes. I have a sister that has cancer reoccurring and progressing and uh, only 45 and she and um, I've been told that she needs to get to the emotions. Uh, there's a scientist I know, Calvin Young, I've come in contact with that has something that repairs the emotions and reprograms. And I'm wondering if your machine does that also. That's one of the first things that I noticed happen. They'd come out of the room um, laughing, crying, smiling. And I, I had one guy that not had, had not laughed or smiled for over two years. Um, when we did these 650 heterites up in South Dakota, um, they had these stupid grins coming out of the room <laughs> after about a week. And, and uh, it, it does work on the emotional level. And uh, we do stress that. if. The vibe machine is just a quick way to get from point A to point B back to where your body needs to be. Um, you need to change, we tell everyone to change their inputs, proper nutrition, environmental toxins, emotional issues. If they do not change their inputs, the issue will always come back. So they, they need to determine what happened in the past and correct that. What about reprogramming uh, kids, all these kids that are on the drugs and adults that have been damaged by the drugs? Well, like the Prozac, uh, you know, I told you about the one with the Prozac. 
um, it, we've seen results in that area. Um, the balancing, I think, is important. Uh, I've had people, uh, we've got a guy that has a nut route, that, you know, candy and nuts and comes in. He's on Prozac, and uh, he, he used the machine, I think, twice and told me that, uh, you know, the neighbor dog didn't bother him that night, and, you know, the, neighbor, the in-laws were coming over, and he didn't get upset. So we're, we're seeing the balancing, and it just takes, I, I think that, you know, that's all it is. It's just a balancing device. Do you know if uh, the device could be helpful in any way for like uh, migraine headaches or pneumonia? Those are two different things, but migraine Definitely headaches? Definitely migraines. Uh, in fact, I'd like to do a study on that one because we, we're running 100% on that. Would that, that just issue. relieve it or, or maybe cure future ones? Well, um, again, I think they're back to their diet issue or some kind of blockage in the body, maybe an accident. Um, if they start working on that, then it does not come back. Yeah. But for pneumonia, you're Pneumonia, not... I haven't seen anything there. Thank I, you. One way or the other, so I can't say. I have a daughter who had uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. At age 21, she had two hip replacements. I know you can't do anything about those, but she is suffering through arthritis even now at age 34. Is this something that would be able to help her? Um, there's rheumatoid and osteo, and osteo, we um, are having results in that one. The rheumatoid is slower. Um, and definitely, you know, if they've had joint replacements, there's something going on because we've seen results on the calcium. So, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> question, uh, in your research, right here. Okay. <laughs> in, in your research uh, in electronic, and obviously we've been working with televisions, things like that, uh, were we able to determine negative effects uh, from television and children three feet from the tube? And I mean, and does that does that relate anything to your vibe machine? No, you're running you're running higher uh, voltage on uh, the televisions. You're running uh, X-ray radiation on televisions, which we are not. Um, we've taken X-ray plates and mounted them all over around the device. Uh, we're using spectrum analyzers to determine the frequencies. In fact, the University of Arizona is going to finish a study for us, but it's not going to be till September on the safety of the device. And, and uh, so we get an independent study on that one. Uh, so right now we're just going by results. I mean, if we've got 50,000 people with nothing bad, that's a good sign. Okay. Uh, afterwards, I'd like to tell you my personal experience with the Vibe machine. Okay. <laughs> Yes. What time are you? Uh, what times are you uh, using the machine to, uh, you know, for those that want to that want to get want to use it? You know. Oh, um, well, the rest of this afternoon and tonight, you know, you're welcome to use it. So right after, so right after the sessions end, you know. Sure. In, in and between uh, that tomorrow. Time, yeah, and tomorrow. And if, if it's possible, if you guys could try it like uh, once today and once tomorrow, that would, you know, would, would give you a good indication. Thirty percent of the people notice something the first time and uh, uh, in some kind of area of their body. Do you have a list of where the machines that you have out? Yes, we got a list out there, and uh, we can give you the names. We, we actually have left that off our website intentionally. My FDA compliance attorney told me we need to be smaller than what we really are. What is your website? <laughs> it's www.vibemachine.com. And uh, we've even had to jerk our testimonials down because, um, again, those are considered making claims. And uh, as the clinical studies get done, we'll put those up. You had uh, mentioned earlier that uh, people on lots of medications seem to respond more slowly to it. Is there any particular classes of medications that seem to interfere with it? We tell everybody to stay on whatever meds they're taking, and that's a decision they make between their doctors. And, uh, but we have had, you know, like the one lady on 17 meds a day within 90 days has gotten completely off of all meds. But that has to be worked with her and her doctor. So uh, they find that they don't need as much of whatever they're taking uh, as they use it. How long have you been doing research with this machine? It took me a couple of years before I actually got the thing working the way it's supposed to. It sat on the, it. Most of that was I didn't have time uh, years. <laughs> Uh, but it, it, it's, uh, uh, it did take about two years. Who's it that has a question over here? 
Hi, you mentioned that you have an FDA compliance attorney, and given the FDA's history on electromedicine, and that the FDA defines anything that changes the function of the body as a medical device, which I guess is about everything, um, what are you going to do to uh, protect yourself from FDA? Are you going to file as a class two medical device, or just not go down that road? Oh, we we are going to. Um we, we're going to try and stay out of a classification three, but if we can get it in a classification two, yes. And I'm, our, our first, after we do the, the DNA in vitro and calcitonin and DHEAs, we're probably going to get it FDA approved for uh, pain. Uh, there's so many different categories, because if we get it FDA approved for lung cancer, what, cancer is a really hot button because there's so much money in it. And so that's one area that we do need to stay away from. Um, once it is FDA approved, that takes the device out of the hands of the private individuals, and then you have to be a medical practitioner to actually purchase one. So then the Vibe sessions, instead of being $20 to $40, are going to be $200 to $400 and, um, for the same thing. Um, that's going to create a problem for the public. Um, but at the same time, then we're going to have a larger market to sell to because then MDs will actually um, acknowledge this device. Yeah, yes. question. Uh, you said a typical treatment is about three minutes, so you have time. The other thing was the amplitude of the strength of the signal, which would be a variable. Uh, is there anything typical you would say about that? You've mentioned that. Uh, Somebody's in there one foot in the grave and didn't know whether they'd get out or not. Yeah, well, Would you we, give them more time or more amplitude? or what, What's your thoughts on that area? Well, you know, we, we go by what they call vitality, uh, if the individual is vital or not, or hydration level. We were talking about uh, certain parts of the country, the electromagnetic field, you have to go longer. If an individual is dehydrated, uh, you need to go more time. Uh, you, you know, you do the old thumbprint, uh, three to ten seconds to, to disappear. Three seconds, you're hydrated. Ten seconds, you better start drinking water. And um, so one to five minutes is where we start. If they have a lot of toxins in their system, uh, we start a minute, minute and a half. If they're a professional athlete, we'll start them out at four to five minutes. If it's a stage four cancer, we'll work them up to eight minutes a day. And that's kind of where we leave them. Can we cancel the rest of the questions and go use the Vibe machine? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you, ladies.